I decided that I needed to do something active in order to help terminally ill patients. I went to see the incoming president who I knew. He said, Peter, don't waste your time. You don't have a hope, hope of changing the attitudes of the Oregon Medical Association members. And the second time, he took a different tack and said that we do it all the time and, uh, and we do it without anybody knowing. And uh, my reaction to that was that often without the family knowing enough, without the patient knowing enough because it's all illegal. And so I wanted the patient in control, not the doctor. I went down to the meeting and I, I said what I had to say. And as I came back to my chair at, at the back of the hall, I, my eyes met the eyes of this, the incoming president, this man that I was referring to. And after a pause, he went to join the uh, podium, went to the podium and w waited his turn. And then he said, let the people of Oregon tell us what they want. I was absolutely amazed. But anyway, I'll take some credit for that. And so, th so th what happened then was that the Oregon Medical Association um, were neutral throughout the campaign. And I think that had a huge influence on the outcome. Now, I, I have a terminal illness and there is no treatment for it. As soon as I knew enough about it, I decided that sooner or later I would be asking my physicians for a six-month prognosis. And uh, they have accepted that, all three of them. And so I have a six-month prognosis. And so I have the medication in my possession. All four of my children know that I am I'm going to take advantage of the Oregon Death of Dignity Act. And they are all regretful but supportive. And so are, uh, so are their spouses. You know, it's interesting that I've sort of tried to visualize what it would be like. Um, and uh, and it'll be a very, very sorrowful time, I can assure you. I've always accepted the idea that if, if, if push came to shove, and if, if, if I, was, if I uh, qualified for the law, that I would use the law.